Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video of the Journey to National Master. Today I bring you a new tournament, uh, Open International Marquis de Pombal, a tournament that I played in early October 2023. So the first round I got paired up against an unrated opponent, it wasn't that interesting, I won pretty easily. And in the second round, I got paired up against Rodrigo Basilio, which I've played before in this journey, and I'll probably leave a card up uh, here uh, or at the end of the video if you want to see our first match. But yeah, I knew it was going to be tough because he's a very strong player, 2023 ELO. And uh, yeah, let's see how the game went. So my opponent had the white pieces. He started with E4. I went uh, C5. The Sicilian, he went 9f3, d6, t4, the open Sicilian takes, and now he played queen takes, which is a little bit uh, a rarer variation. Normally, people take with the knight, but the queen is totally fine as well. And uh, yeah, I sort of had prepared a little bit in case he went for this, because I I saw that he played this variation against Gustav Ribeiro in uh, some months prior in the first division and uh, yeah it was pretty pretty cool game actually but okay I went knight c6 attacking the queen bishop e5 pinning the knight bishop d7 takes takes knight c3 knight f6 this is I'm I'm going fast through this because this is um, this is all theory known theory Bishop g5, e6, long castles, bishop e7. And yeah, this position is um, it's pretty interesting. Like, white is definitely up in development, but I have the bishop here. And yeah, you can call this position equal. Um, you know, we have one pair of minor pieces traded. And uh, yeah, white has some, some slight pressure on my position. After bishop e7, my opponent decided to bring the rook, rook to e1 here. I castled and he played e5. And here I started thinking because I was trying to recall the theory. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what was the best move, but I, I just took the pawn on e5. It can't be that bad. It took with the knight on e5 and here I stopped as well to think uh, do I keep the queens on the board? Do I not keep the queens on the board? But after some time, you know, I decide to just take the queens off the board. And after this trade, here came a, a very, very important decision. And this, I had like 20 minute thing here. Because there's a lot of things going on actually in this position. First of all, what I noticed is that my opponent just left this pawn on g2 hanging. And, you know, I couldn't really figure out what was his idea with if I took the pawn on g2. I didn't really know what he wanted. And I thought, and I thought, and I thought. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I felt like for him to, to have, uh, you know, let that pawn hanging, it, it must have had a reason. I don't think he would have just left that pawn hanging. Uh, without really calculating something uh, but I myself only saw that he could play like f3 to block my my bishop and I would have to play something like bishop h3 and it feels like this bishop is slightly uh, just out of the game for a while I still have to put the bishop on f5 to bring it back and he's no longer like defending the queen side um, yeah I didn't really like this it felt like for the price of a pawn to just misplace my bishop I thought this wouldn't be that good for black uh, this is very very good for black indeed according to the computer it's just a, a comfortable advantage just being up a pawn but yeah I didn't want to go for this but the more I look now the engine actually says that after um, bishop takes on g2 knight d7 is is rather strong because if I take here on d7 he takes on e7 and now I am losing an exchange here 
because I can't protect this knight. So yeah, after uh, knight d7, I would have to bring the bishop back to c6 and um, sacrifice the exchange. This is the best line according to the computer, which yeah, I wouldn't like to do this. Um, if I try to move, let's say the rook to to d8 here to not lose the the exchange, bishop takes on f6. Um, yeah, if I go bishop takes on f6 back there's a knight f6 check i take the knight and then he picks up the bishop so yeah there's actually there were uh quite some uh, some tactics here that i didn't really um calculate so in uh, in retrospect it was actually good that i didn't uh, take on g2 because i might have fallen for one of these ones uh and yeah, I just couldn't really figure out the the best move in this position. I, I didn't really know what I should do. Uh, I thought about rook a c8. But I didn't like the fact that after takes takes that he would double on d file and have all this pressure. And yeah, I thought that this would be very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, let's say I play, I don't know, rook f c8. I thought that uh, this would be very uncomfortable. For example, if he um, played bishop takes on f6, bishop takes on f6, and like infiltrating the d file with uh, rook d7, and now this pawn is weak. And uh, yeah, I um, didn't really like this when I was calculating in my head. But here, I, I think I could. Like, I can't take on c3, that's important, because I need to be covering the d8 square, but the computer says that after b5, that I'm fine. If it captures, I capture on c2. If it captures this pawn, I have b4, and now I'm actually probably winning. Um, so yeah, but like, seeing all of this back here, uh, it's... It is kind of hard for me. I still have a very good uh, calculation skills to calculate such a, a long variation that it's not that forcing. After all, it can do a lot of in-between moves. So yeah, I definitely need to work on that going into 2024 in the, my next uh, tournaments for sure. Focus more on calculation instead of opening preparation. Um, but yeah, here, due to the fact that uh, I was afraid of this default control, I ended up playing a very bad move, which is rook fd8, and I just allow him to damage my structure for free. And yeah, in the end, uh, um, this was a, a very bad move. I should have played rook ac8, would, would have been completely fine, because even in the worst case scenario, if he doubles here, I can double here, and I... If he ever infiltrates on d7, I can always just play rook c7 to cut uh, the connection of the rook. And as long as I keep this bishop on this diagonal and I cover the d8 square, I'll never get back rank made. I can also make some luft with h6. Um, not a big deal. There's nothing going on. I think in these positions where... There's not a lot of pieces on the board already. It's more important to focus on the quality of uh, the pawn structure for sure because the weaknesses can be felt more when there's less pieces on the board. But yeah, I mean, I think even rook f c8 is more accurate. Uh, I don't know exactly why this is slightly better than the other rook. Um, yeah, maybe because my king gets to the center uh, here on the um, on the a eight rank faster to the center. Maybe that's the reason why rook f c eight is slightly more accurate. But um, yep, not one hundred percent sure. But let's go get back into the game. So rook f d eight by me. He took on c six correctly. Took back. And he immediately started pressuring the weak c6 pawn. Here I played knight d5. Okay, a nice little move. Uh, of course, my opponent doesn't have time to to capture the knight 
or the pawn. He has to first trade bishops because, you know, if he takes here, I take with check. The same thing if he takes the knight, I take here with check and I win a piece. Actually, here I don't win a piece because he has knight e3. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, he can take the pawn. But he took the bishop. I took back with the knight. Now I'm protecting c6 pawn. And I thought that in this position I would be slightly under pressure. But in the end, I thought that the weakness of a pawn wouldn't be enough for him to claim a an advantage. Which is just incorrect. <laughs> That's just a clear advantage. But okay. Uh, I played rook d1. I brought the king closer to the center here. Knight e4 by my opponent. We, I trade the rook on d1. Bring the other rook to the d file here. He played rook. A king c8 here. I actually was surprised that he didn't bring the king closer to the center. I was very, very much surprised. And I was happy to see this. Uh, king c c1. I thought it was a little bit of a... Uh, of a bad move but the engine doesn't really mind that one here i play rook d5 which is definitely a bad move um yeah my opponent just quickly played rook a4 targeting the pawn on a7 and now i have to go back with the rook to d7 so this was clearly a waste of time by me um yeah I sh if i wanted to you know play something with the rook i should have probably played rook d7 immediately but yeah knight um knight c5 comes and uh, yeah this rook is, in, is misplaced here so yeah it's tough to say um it's tough already to you know to make a a good active move for black i think i'm already i just am already forced to play passively due to my weakness on the on the c6 pawn it just uh, was very careless by me to allow the the weakness without having to but okay it is what it is i played rook d5 rook a4 rook back to d7 knight c5 rook c7 just trying to hold on and uh, just defend passively at this point there is not much alternative i can't really create counterplay Rook b4, very nice move, infiltrating here on the back rank. I played knight d5, rook b8 check, king e7, c4 here attacking my knight. I play knight b6 and here I was kind of happy because I, it almost felt like he made a mistake because it felt like this rook was going to be trapped maybe in the future or maybe I would be able to trade... Um, rooks although it's not easy at all with the rook b7 check if i move this rook from here it's tough tough position but okay he played b3 i played knight d7 trying to trade pieces to alleviate the pressure he took on d7 because of course i was attacking the rook as well so he didn't really have time to move the rook so we trade knights and here i was more confident that i was going to be able to to hold and to make a draw um, but it's not that simple he played rook c8 here i played king d6 my king at least was more active than his he brought finally brought the king into the game with king c2 c5 here uh, c5 i mean it's hard to say what i should uh, should do um but yeah i played c5 here fixing that pawn um he played a3 started moving his his majority on the on the queen side i played rook c7 of course if he trades rooks uh, this will help me quite a lot although i wouldn't say that this is um, going to be an easy task to defend but it's way easier without rooks on the board but of course he moved this rook to h8 attacking my pawn i'm defending my pawn he played king c3 e5 b4 here takes takes and yeah um just in a span of a of a couple of moves this position is already like 
winning for white um yeah it's very hard to to um to understand um how to defend this properly or the best defense is just really hard also we were starting to get lower on the clock here oh we already on move 34 i played a six i'm running out of moves out of useful moves he played rook a8 attacking my pawn on a6 played rook c6 and um, yeah after c5 check i played king d7 here i'm already uh getting really close to just uh losing because this king is active now it's putting a lot of pressure on all my pawns i my rook is super passive and it's pretty much boxed in uh this square i can't really move my rook without hanging something here i played h5 it's really just making a move because i have to i don't have anything to do here h4 g6 g3 e4 by me rook king d4 f5 and uh, yeah my opponent just plays rook g7 i play king f6 protecting the pawn on g6 here he went back to b7 and now he's already threatening to play rook b6 force a rook trade and then queen the pawn so i decided to bring my king back to e6 he played uh, rook b6 anyways i took he took back and now this end game is losing um yeah there's not much i i can do the pawn race is losing and i quickly realized that and i resigned here but if i um didn't take the rook let's say i played king d7 this would also be losing because my opponent doesn't take here immediately although this is still uh winning for white but i think the easiest is to play king d5 and uh yeah now the engine says that the best move is rook c8 just letting him take all my pawns but if i take take he has the opposition i have to go back to c8 King c6 this would even be easier for him to win so yeah um yeah the i just ended up getting outplayed um as soon as uh, i went out of book i just made a huge mistake positional mistake and i got punished for it so yeah very nice and smooth game by my opponent and yeah i was very upset after this game of course um but yeah i don't i can't really be that hard on myself during the game it's hard to to make this um these decisions and i just have to learn with it and keep moving forward and realize that you know uh damaging the structure uh is is something that you really really should only do if you have to and i didn't have to do that didn't have to damage my pawn structure so for next games i should take that into account and be more careful when i make those type of decisions so yeah it is what it is round two ggs and uh yeah i'll see you guys for the next round take care bye bye